My name is Becca Weber, and today I would like to pose and explore the question, is technology outstripping morality? For most of civilized human history, our morals have been based upon religion, be it monotheistic or polytheistic, ancient or relatively new sect. Higher powers or one singular decrees certain laws and standards. Naturally, there are consequences if worshippers break these laws, incentive to keep the populace in line. This system functioned on the whole for several millennia. But according to a recent poll by Wind Gallup International, only 60% of Americans today describe themselves as religious, a drop from 75% in only 2005. Now, I recently read an article called The Law of Accelerating Returns by Ray Kurzweil. It tells of how in the next 100 years, we will undergo the mind-boggling equivalent of 20,000 years worth of development. That's 200 times faster than conventional time. Is it a coincidence that this recent decline in religious identity corresponds with this development that has been called the technological revolution? Personally, I don't think so, and I'll tell why. I grew up in a family that would consider itself part of that religious 60%. They're very involved in ministry and stewardship and accolading and so on and so forth. So of course, I was taught about the Holy Spirit and about how God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. But my own personal beliefs don't quite align. They are instead, I think, more reflective of my generation, which is in turn a product of the technological revolution. You see, everywhere I look, I see change and development and technology erupting out of the not-so-wood work. In short, I see a machine world that has outgrown natural and therefore outgrown the traditional God and the rules he set forth that I had heard so much about. I doubt the very foundations of the moral system I'm expected to live by. Now, I've been thinking about this for a while now, and I came up with three fundamental ways that technology undermines religion-based morality. First, the convenience makes it difficult to choose between what is right and what is easy. Second, the brand spanking newness of it all lacks precedent and therefore lacks guidelines. And finally, technology promotes this idea of instant gratification that is not compatible with religion's core concept of faith. A great example of this technological mutiny is social media. Just for a general idea, how many of you guys use social media? That is, raise your hands if you're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or LinkedIn. Me too, guilty as charged. Now, no one saw, but if you looked around, that was a lot of people. And we're not alone. According to a poll by the Pew Research Center, 92% of youth use some kind of social media. But at the same time, Patricia Snell and Christian Smith published findings in their book, Souls in Transition, that describe how youth today are incapable of effectively describing what morals are. Now, I didn't hear any dramatic gasps, though I probably should have, because that was a drastic statement. Does that mean that the up-and-coming adults of the world don't comprehend the difference between right and wrong? That's an unnerving idea, although I don't believe it to be correct. I do, however, see a probable correlation between social media usage and deteriorating understanding of morals, for three reasons that I personally have experienced, and the majority of y'all probably have too. As I run through them, think about it in terms of your own life. First off, the sheer amount of information proffered through social media in the form of opinions, of links to web pages, of articles, has allowed deceit to infect our communication of knowledge. An example of this, my technology teacher told us in 15 minutes how we could get onto Wikipedia and edit an article to say polar bears are blue. It was taken down eventually, but it was up long enough that the ignorant reader could have become befuddled. And I admit, this was an innocuous experiment. But really, any practice of deceit directly contradicts the moral value of truth. Secondly, the realm of social media is regulated only to the bare minimum. No one can control the quality of what is said in terms of kindness and of truth. This, coupled with the fact that there's no guilt-tripping, inhibiting factor of direct face-to-face -face contact, means that many people feel capable of saying things that they usually would have the decency not to. I know I have. In moments of spite, I've so-called subtweeted as an excuse to say some really nasty things. I'm ashamed to admit it because doing so disregards the inherent worth of each person and respect that is their birthright. Finally, the accessibility of information has allowed us to become accustomed to this idea of instant gratification. The constant supply of facts and figures has crippled our ability to wonder. 
because now an idea not immediately supported by solid proof is corroded by doubt. Wonder is an inherent quality of faith, and with its demise comes a new era of skepticism, to which I've already described how I belong. This skepticism provides shaky foundations for the traditional morals that our society has maintained and threatens their stability. Facing this impending moral vacuum, we must adapt. I'm not saying that religion is obsolete, for I know that there are those who have strong and true faith. But for people like me, who can't really relate to a religious moral system, I'd like to present morals in a new light. Rather than established norms, they should be entrepreneurial efforts on the behalf of the individual, catered to a case-by-case -case basis, where you look at the consequences of an action and then make a decision. Because there can be no doubt that technology must not be allowed to outstrip morality. We must strike a balance between the two in order to stride forth successfully into the future. Thank you.